I love creating content about fashion, travel, lifestyle. I am team effortless, so I believe in sharing content that's relatable. I'm all about the effortless lifestyle. So if I'm sharing any tips around fashion, if it's about lifestyle, if it's, you know, traveling, I want it to be relatable and effortless because ain't nobody got time for that. So we all sort of um, need to be able to, at least for me, I feel like I need to be able to share content that people can relate to um, and that does something, whether it's entertaining them, whether it is educating them um, or teaching them something. Being a content creator has also helped me in my, like wearing my other um, nine to five professional hat because I noticed the more I got comfortable in front of the camera like doing videos going live doing live streams that also helped with my presentation skills at work perfection is the enemy of good so don't try to have this high bar for yourself that you're I, I must check all these boxes or if I'm creating you know this video it needs to look at, I need to have all these things. And I feel like that also leads to paralysis. And then people end up not doing anything, right? Or they're scared to post a video or they're scared because they're like, oh, the picture didn't really come out or whatever it is that I'm trying to do. If I'm promoting a product, um, you know, as an entrepreneur, if um, I'm selling myself as a service, like if I'm a speaker, you know, if the event circuit is my thing or I, you know, guest speak on podcasts. And maybe I feel like, oh, like that promo wasn't quite right. Whatever it is that we're all trying to promote. We should not wait for it to be super perfect. It's like, just do it because you never know. Like the sometimes it's so funny where it might be that one thing where you felt like it wasn't really good that people latch onto and say, oh, I really love this you know, piece of content or whatever. Meanwhile, you didn't even want to post it in the first place. <laughs>
You're out here, a whole mother of children, not child, but children. And you're working this full time job. And yep. then you decide to be a content creator on top of that. So tell us, how how did this come about? Like, was this all, always something that you desired to do? Was it something new? Like, how did you make that initial decision? Like, take us on the journey. Sure. So it wasn't always decided. And in fact, sometimes I kick myself and I'm like, why didn't you do this sooner or start sooner? Um, so how I got started is really funny because I've all, I've always had a passion for fashion, love, you know, fashion. And I'm the type of person where if someone asks me, you know, where did you get that shirt or where did you get your earrings? I'm not going to lie. Cause I know sometimes women can be funny because you don't want people wearing the same stuff that you're wearing. Let's be honest, right? Keeping it real. But I'm the kind of person where if someone asks me, I really will say, oh, I got it at, you know, so-and-so. So this happens a lot. And one day I was out to lunch with one of my girlfriends and then it happened again where someone stopped and said, oh, I like that. And, you know, and then I'm like, oh, I got it at this store. So my girlfriend was like, and she's a book blogger. So she, oops, sorry. I heard some, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Your audio is coming in perfectly. It was um, something else came in, in my um, headphones. I'm like, what is that? Um, so my girlfriend is a book blogger. So she said, have you ever considered starting a blog? She's like, so that way you're actually pushing out, you know, these tips and content, and then people can go on your blog and find out, you know, information about where you shop and where you get things. Literally that weekend, and I remember because it was a Memorial Day weekend, that Friday, I went home and started researching, you know, how do you start a blog? I got my domain. I literally did all of the things that weekend. My husband thought I was crazy because he's like, where did this come from? So it wasn't decided at all, but I'm like, oh, this makes sense. And then the more I researched, the more I'm like, yeah, like I need to do this. And that was how my blog was born. So I have a blog at um, tokestakeonstyle.com. And that has, you know, led me on this journey that I really didn't plan out fully. Um, but I'm now on this journey that I'm glad to be on and I've evolved and learned, you know, over the years based on, again, a suggestion that a friend made based on knowing that I have a love for passion, a passion for fashion, a love for fashion. And I just, I love, um, inspiring women. I love empowering women, um, through again, these effortless tips, because let's, let's be honest, there's a difference when you step out looking a certain way. There's a certain way that you carry yourself differently and you move differently when you feel confident because you are confident in, you know, how you're showing up. And I'm not saying it's all on, you know, about what's on the outside, but it does make a difference when, you know, we're confident in our appearance. So I love that. And that's, you know, that's why I enjoy um, doing what I do. Man, that is so awesome. Like, I love that you had somebody in your community that your community that was like, hey, you, you're really good at this. I think this can be something. And not only did they give you that amazing advice, you actually like jumped on it and made it happen. Yeah. So um, I do have more questions about your sure. journey. But yes. before we get there, something okay. that you said was like, um, when we basically when we look good, we feel good. Feel good. So, what what's like one tip just off the bat, like just starting off strong? What's one tip you can give uh any of us out there that want to look good and want to feel good? Get a belt. <laughs> a belt. And I, people laugh when I say that, but I'm like, jewelry is nice. You know what I mean? Like bags and purses are nice, but I feel like a belt is the most underrated accessory in the world because it can literally change your entire outfit without you again, effortless, right? Without you doing the most it, you can switch out your outfit and remix what you have just by belting. And then it creates, you know, more of a structured look because you're cinching your waist and it just, it does all of the things. So, and for folks who may feel like, oh, that sounds good, but I don't feel like I have the body type to rock a belt. I'm going to say, yes, you can. <laughs> it's all about the type of belt. So that's why I say if, um, 
if someone's not sure about belt or belting, start with a wrap belt because given, you know, a wrap belt, right? It's, you're thinking about it as just one long, you know, um, piece of material and you can wrap that around. So that works for any body type. So that right there is, you know, me, um, I'm busting a myth when people say, oh, belts are not for everyone. Yes, they are for everyone. You just need to find the right belt. So that's one tip for everyone. Awesome. Thank you yeah. for giving us that tip. We're going to uh, be able to step outside looking a little bit more stylish now. <laughs> so getting back to your, your content creator journey, when you first got to this place, you're like, you know what? It's Memorial Day weekend. I have three days. Let me go get this uh, website. Let me go start this blog. How did you figure out the structure and plan for how you were going to do it and do it consistently? That is a really good question. So like I said, I, I've evolved a lot over the, over time. When I decided to do, to start the blog, to do it, initially, I actually was going to ask, which I actually did ask, um, two other girlfriends to see if they'd be interesting, interested in partnering up because for me, I'm like, it might be interesting if it's more of um, three people who are sharing their different styles, right? And that way I can, you know, divide the content creating and posting and publishing. Um, again, this was from all the, all the research and Googling and reading. So one of them said no, um, because she's super busy and she's like, let me not commit to something that I know for sure. I won't be able to, again, consistency, right? I won't be able to do it. So she's like, nah, the second person was like, oh, maybe, you know, maybe she would. But then as she also started seeing the work involved, right? Cause we're talking about actually creating the content. So you have to think about what is, um, the focus, how often do we want to post? How often do we want to publish? And you just don't, po I always joke, um, there's an old movie, Field of Dreams, um, with um, Ray Liotta and James Earl Jones and um, Kevin Gosnar. And there's a, you know, a line, if you build it, they will come. And I always joke and say, if you build it, they will not come unless you've got those guys in the movie, right? Which we don't have those guys in the movie in real life. So you can't just build it and hope people will come. You have to promote it. So you can't just publish right on the on the blog, on the website and say, oh, our work is done. We have to drive people there. So again, that's another layer because now that's more work. And that was about nine years ago or so. So I can't even like now look at all the platforms there are. There wasn't even TikTok, right? So thinking about just how much even the different outlets and platforms there are to help amplify your message. And I and we were freaking out about it, you know, Instagram and Facebook and YouTube and oh my God, how do I, you know, get pub like publish and then try to do that and build an email list also so that you get people to subscribe. So I say all that to say, um, I had to think about all those things and then figure out what's what's the consistency. So initially I started out trying to post every single day. And I found out very quickly that with the kind of job um that I have, because I'm um, in marketing for financial services is my day job. I, I can't do that every single day. It's just not, for me, it's not sustainable. So I had to, you know, <laughs> take a step back and then change sort of my approach to how often I publish. And then when, when it's there, what are the steps in terms of trying to get, you know, people to see the content that's on there? So, yeah. Hey, that makes sense. I think that concept of that every day, multiple times a day can sometimes uh, be a little paralyzing uh, because it's so much work. Yeah. So knowing that you can still gain the success and not necessarily have to be every day or seeing you as proof of that is really awesome. So thank you so much. For sharing that so you were considering in entering this realm with some partners and that didn't necessarily work out how mm. did you adjust to essentially taking it on yourself though I just you I just did it and that's the thing is like 
sometimes we have to remind ourselves that we don't grow in comfort. I love that. That's one of my favorite just quotes. We don't grow in comfort. So if, if you try to overthink and try to figure out, um, you know, how to make it happen. And then you're scared and we're human. So we should be scared about doing things that aren't, um, may not be immediately natural and normal, you know, for us, right. We're, we're learning and figuring this out. Um, but we don't grow in comfort. So we have to push ourselves and we have to try some things and see what happens and do it scared. So that was what I had to do was say, okay, my two girlfriends, um, this isn't really a path, right, that they want to take. So let's let me just do this and see, you know, how this works out. And that was how I started. <laughs> so, um, and I've been going, you know, going ever since. And they're two of my biggest cheerleaders as well. Even though, again, they were like, ah, I'm not doing this, but they were at least very supportive. Um, and sometimes we have to do things like that where it might not be the most comfortable. I, I don't love, for example, going live and doing live videos, but people don't know. They It surprises them when I say that because they've seen me do it and they might watch one of my lives and they're like, oh my God, I didn't know. And I'm like, if you really know me, I'm like, you can, you can figure out my tells when I'm nervous because I, I do, there's some scratching things. That, like there are ways you can, if you really look, you'll figure out that I'm nervous about doing something, but you have to. So I just, I push myself to say, cause it's, it can be awkward when you're talking, you know, um, sometimes it feels like you're just talking to the ether, <laughs> right? If you're not getting that response, but you have to keep going. So I feel like when you remind yourself that you need to get to that place where you're not going to grow, if you don't do some things that are uncomfortable, then you'll never do anything. <laughs> <laughs> that is good that yeah. is so good um because it is uh it is so difficult like choosing being uncomfortable while growing um over sometimes being comfortable and stagnant yes uh, so that great advice but <laughs> ooh, that thing is hard sometimes and especially I feel like in my opinion when it comes to content creation specifically because yes. you have to continuously create so when you start to engage and um take this journey of blogging what was it like to then transition it kind of how you were mentioning um in a way where you could reach people on all of the platforms yeah. So that was, and that's the thing is, is part of the research that I, when I was Googling and reading up all these articles, you know, it was always the same where you have to be on, you know, Instagram and you have to be on Facebook. So then, you know, I had to start posting. Um, and it was like, and which is why I said I've evolved over time. Cause if you scroll all the way down to my Instagram, <laughs> There are some very interesting posts and pictures. Those day oh, one IGs? I left it. I did not delete. Yeah, I left it. It's all there. I did not delete mine. So they're there. So you, over time, um, and again, it's it's learning. We, If you want to be a content creator, you have to be a, a lifelong learner. You have to always learn because it's always something, right? There's lemonade now. There's um, Instagram started out as, you know, more of a, a picture or a photo platform. And now it's all about reels. So you always have to evolve and keep up. And that can seem like a lot, um, of course, because you're like, okay, what platform do I need to learn now or whatever? But I feel like part of the whole deciding what journey you're on is also deciding what makes sense for you. And how many platforms can you handle? Because again, we're not Wonder Women or Superman. So we can't, We it may seem like some of you know the content creators that we look up to have figured that out and they're there, but they usually will have a team, right? Of people who are helping them now because they're at that level. So people who are assisting them, you know, like PAs with posting on the different platforms and such, but that can be overwhelming. So I think part of the journey is also thinking through 
what platforms can I start with? And I think that's the other thing is sometimes because we want to achieve so much, we try to overachieve. So I need to be on YouTube. I need to be on TikTok. I need to be on Instagram. I need to be on, you know, Lemonade. I need to be on all, Pinterest. Let's not forget Pinterest. I need to be on Pinterest and I need to, and that when, when you feel the need to be on everything, I feel like that can be overwhelming and it can get overwhelming and burnout can happen. So it might be, you know, make a plan and say, initially, I want to be mostly on Instagram and TikTok. And then I want to see, you know, how that, how that does, what, you know, what am I trying to achieve there? And then let me see how I can, like, does it make sense to add on? If I feel like I'm at a point where if I'm, um, batching and batch creating content, then can I start to cross a post where if I use, you know, a video for a reel and I use it on, on TikTok, is there something that I can do with that same piece of content, you know, somewhere else like YouTube has shorts now. So can I use that there? So I'm starting to expand, but not, you know, right away. I'm trying to figure it out, you know, one day at a time. So I think, I think that's important. And that's how I, um, pretty much started out. Cause initially I was also trying to be on YouTube all the time. Like, and again, quickly realized that with two girls and a husband and a full-time job and trying to make sure that I'm living life where content creating isn't just my life. I'm actually living life as opposed to living life around content creation you have to make some choices. And so that's where I'm at is where I'm like, okay, for me, this is what I'm looking to do as a content creator. These are my goals. Um, and I, I have to be mindful of then not getting caught up in comparing, right? Because what do we do as content creators? We sometimes will compare ourselves, right? To our peers and other content creators and say, wow, how did they grow? This is where, why am I here? And they're there. Why am I not getting brand deals? And they, why am I not... But it's like, we're all different and we're all on different journeys. I have, you know, friends who do this full-time, who are full-time content creators. I have friends like me who it's, you know, a, it's our essentially another job, a side job for us or, you know, side hustle or side gig. Um, and it's another, you know, income stream, essentially. You have to decide, you know, what you want. And it shocks people when they say, so are you going to go full-time or is your aspiration to go full-time? And I say, no. <laughs> and they get surprised. They're like, really? I'm like, yes, I don't want to go full. That is not my dream and my vision, but that is, but I know people who have that dream. That's what they, you know, what they aspire to, but I, that isn't me personally. That isn't my dream. I want to continue to do what I'm doing, which I, I have my full-time job. I have my benefits <laughs> and then I'm you know, content creating and it's another stream. And what, what, what else can you do from that? You know what I mean? So can you create your own branded product? So I'm working on a line of belts. I was talking about belts. I'm working on my own, <laughs> on my own product line of belts that I want to sell and put out there. Um, so there, there, everyone has a goal and, but you have to make sure that it's what you want versus what you think other people want you to want or what you see other people having and you feeling like you need to keep up. It's it, We all need to get to the point where we are comfortable with whatever lane we want to be in. And that could be full-time, part-time. It could be full-time, uh, starting full-time and then saying, I want to, you know, I want to go part-time or it could be part-time and then saying, I want to go all in and have a plan for when I become a full-time content creator. But we we're, everyone has, you know, their own dream. <laughs> oh my goodness that's so amazing I mean it's so true and it's so obvious right like everyone has their own lane that they're supposed to be traveling in and sometimes it can look like full-time sometimes it can look like part-time like mm -hmm. logically it's like yeah but yeah. the the reality of it is just so amazing to consider like May I think mainly because something else that you mentioned when you were just talking, the concept of us being achievers. And for those of us that are oftentimes type A, um, <laughs> <laughs> we kind of 
lean into that overachieving and sometimes hit burnout, like you mentioned. So getting to this place where we can accept, you know what, maybe this is not necessarily something that I want to do full time, but I'm okay with part time is huge. How did you, how did you come to that conclusion that you know what, I'm not going to allow this to impact me in such a way that I feel like what society is pulling me to, which is this full-time content creation, is what I'm going to do. But no, instead, I'm going to be settled and resolved in myself that I'm good with part-time and that's what I want. Yeah, so for me, it was more thinking about the fact that, you know, I ha- we have these two girls. Um we have to pay for college and we have all these other things, right? That we have to save for. So for me, thinking about my personality. So um, security is important. I'm a Virgo. I love like, (laughs) so if I want to be more, you know, in a secure space where at least I know that there's a set check that's coming at a specific time, you know, on a recurrent basis versus a you know, do I want to be in a space where there could be a check coming, you know, at um, on a recurring basis, but then if certain things happen, there's a recession, you know, economy and the same thing. And again, we're making a list of pros and cons, right? Because on the flip side, same thing could happen with the full-time job where recession happens, people get laid off, right? Same, you know, recession happens, brands start to cut their their budget because usually the marketing budget is always the first to go. So if they're going to say, let's cut, um, you know, the amount of budget we're spending, uh, you know, working with content creators or, you know, influencers, then you might be in a situation where you may not say have um, the amount that you thought was going to come in, say in a quarter or whatever it is, given some of those dynamics. So I feel like, and that's where it's all about knowing yourself, right? And there's that saying, to thine self be true. (laughs) You have to know yourself because there are some people who are fine with, you know, because they know the personality they have where they're, you know, hustling and they're like, I'm going to make sure that I'm getting whatever that amount is that I, you know, need from a budgeting perspective, like X amount each month. And I'm going to make sure that I get that um, somehow. So just when I thought about all of that um, and some of the uncertainty, that's when I'm like, okay, for me, um, this is more an additional source of income. So that way, you know, if I want to splurge on something, I don't legit literally have to say to my husband, oh, like, you know, because if there's, you know, there's a family budget, right? So it's like, that's, so that's for me, what makes sense. Um, but then I know people who do this, full, like they are full-time content creators and they love it and they haven't had, knock on wood, um, bring that continues to be, you know, continues to be the same. They haven't had issues where they feel like, oh my goodness, you know, I don't know about, um, you know, what's next because I, I feel like there's, you know, a dip, right, in the payments I'm getting or, you know, um, affiliate income or whatever it is. So I feel like there's always... Um, there's always three sides, right? You hear someone else's story, there's your story. And then there might be another story (laughs) in the mix, right? That you may not know about or another story that someone wants to force on you, but you have to just, can't live for other people. Have to, you have to live for yourself. It has to be about what makes sense for you. If I listened to uh, most people, I would have quit my job and gone full time. 1000%. 1000%. Yeah. 1000%. So yeah. you also mentioned the entrepreneurial aspect yes. that um, has also been a part of your life. So for you, how has content creation impacted you in that entrepreneurial space? And have you always had that entrepreneurial spirit? That, oh my God, that's a good one. Um, So it's actually, it helps add to my sat, my level of sanity. So again, <laughs> I'm not saying like having a full-time job is nirvana, but for me, I feel like it's the best of both worlds because I have content creation. You know what I mean? So I don't want to say it's therapy, but that, you know, so 
content creation for me, um, it it helps me deal with what whatever it is that I can't do in my day to day, you know, like meaning in my nine to five. Um, so in terms of the whole entrepreneurial um, piece of it, I feel like I've always had a little bit of that um, entrepreneurial spirit in me. But then again, once I started this journey, I would just say it magnified it because yeah, you start, you're running it as a business in a way. And you have to, you know, like I said, you have to think about what your goal is, what are your objectives? And then what are you looking to accomplish? Um, you know, for the week, you talked about content creation. So is it going to be too overwhelming if I try to batch and try to knock out, you know, recording multiple X number of videos in one day? Or if I do a photo shoot and I try to fit in, like what, you know, what makes sense? So you're running it as a business. And then when you are um, getting, you know, um, paid, whether it's through brand partnerships or through, you know, your whatever affiliate. So I'm signed up with Amazon, for example, um, and with uh, Reward Style and with Shop Collective. <laughs> so you're, you know, you're starting to figure out um, what those different um, streams are, right? And who's paying you when, because um, I have my spreadsheet and you're, you're keeping track, right? Of all of that. So you're, you're, it's a business. So I tell people it is a business. And then if you work with a photographer, if, um, if that's something that you want to, you know, again, shell out um, the money for, that's an expense, and that's something else to consider. Or are you going to shoot on your own to save some money? Or are you going to have, if you have a kid who's old enough to, you know, hold a camera, are you teaching them? So there are all these things that you're thinking about. Um, and you're, yes, it is a business. So that's what I like. Is it, So in that sense, it's the best of both worlds where, you know, I have the nine to five, but then there's also then the Tokes take on style. <laughs> um you know, business and what am I doing with that? And, you know, what am I looking to um, achieve or accomplish? And I will say that ha being a content creator has also helped me in my, like wearing my other um, nine to five professional hat, because I noticed the more I got comfortable in front of the camera, like doing videos, going live, doing live streams, that also helped with my presentation skills at work. Cause then I got, you know, I felt like I was more confident in delivering. So yeah. Yeah. I love that. Love that those transferable skills. Yes. Uh, able to like kind of find that balance between um, the two uh, spaces that you're operating in. Well, you're operating in a lot of spaces, but yeah. those specifically, <laughs> specifically yeah. those two, those two that we mentioned. So in this space of like entrepreneurial content creation, um, how did you learn how to gain and navigate those partnerships that you made? That's a good a good question. So again, just um, re Googling. So I feel like there's no better university than the <laughs> University of Google. And then talking to other um, creators. So over time, you might network with other creators, especially like with me, I have um, creators who I've become friends with here in the, D you know, who are in the DC area. So, and there, there are other creators where now that I think about it, it's so weird that I've never met them in person, but I, we, I still, you know, message and can ask questions. So I feel like um, by talking to other people, that is also another way, um, you know, to learn. And so you figure out um, if I'm pitching, what, you know, what do you think, what has worked for you, right? When, you know, you've pitched. The other thing I will say to anyone um, is to sign up for as many influencer um, platforms as possible where you have um, third parties. And it's a mixed bag because some folks will say, but they don't pay as much as if, you if when you work directly with the brand but the thing is for folks who may just be you know starting out and sometimes you may not always be able to you know negotiate with the brand this is another way for you to at least get brand deals and sometimes depending on 
um, who the brand is, who's working with this, you know, third party influencer network, they actually will, they may give you a chance to put in what your bid is and what you're asking, um, you know, them to pay you. So I will always say, and I can email you because I have a list um, of these different, um, some of these different platforms. So I can send that to you. Um, I don't know how you, you know, you guys can share that with your audience, but awesome. just sign people just sign up for as many as you can, because you just, sometimes you never know. So that's one way, um, to get, you know, some of those, uh, brand deals. And then of course there's pitching directly to a brand, whether it's your, um, starting with, um, Instagram and trying to DM them on Instagram and then maybe asking for who's the best person, you know, to speak to about their influencer partnerships, doing research on LinkedIn um, also, and trying to figure out if you can find, you know, um, people who work on, you know, influencer partnerships. It varies because sometimes it lives within different departments, um, depending on the brand. But those are some ways where at least if you want to, and then if you're able to then get an email address, then you can send, you know, a pitch where you're, you know, pitching yourself um, and talking about how many times you've mentioned them, what your audience is, or, and if you, if, you know, just, just starting out, then trying to think through what can you offer that they may want. So, yeah, so that's sort of how I've learned over time. And then never, if a brand offers you um, a particular rate, never say yes to the first rate. Always negotiate, always. Even if you're super excited because it's a brand you've always wanted to work with and you're like, what if I, you know, overreach and then they're not interested. Always trust your gut. That is one thing I have found. Never accept the first rate because there's always more money on the table. So never. And you can say it polite. Like I'll, I'll start, you can start politely and say, um, you know, thank you, such and such. I just wanted to find out by any chance, is the budget flexible? Like that's, <laughs> you know, like I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm not demanding, but I, I, it's the budget flight. Like, like what? And then you, so that's how you start. And then I'm every time then they'll say, oh, like, what do you normally, whatever. They may not be able to give you exactly what you ask for, but I'm telling you, it's going to be more than what they initially offered you. That is some solid advice right there. It, it's, it's the budget flexible. <laughs> Quick question. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So you mentioned this time around the concept of reaching out to people and kind of leaning into your network. But something that I've heard you mention, like since the beginning of the interview uh, mm -hmm. is this concept of like Googling. So yes. in the age of AI, yes, how have you found ways to leverage AI in your, in, in, in your content creation? And may, maybe you haven't like, so I mm -hmm. guess I should start off by saying, have you, and if you have, how? So that's another, so now in this day and age, that is going to be the next evolution of, you know, the University of Google is the University of AI. So yes, I love, um, you know, AI and I love chat GPT. I love the fact that you can plug in whatever it is. So I, I just was talking about pitching. So I have um, put in like prompts to say, you know, best, um, brand deal, you know, email to, you know, just whatever those different prompts are. I've also used it for um, content outlines um, so that if it gives you like a bulleted list, then you're essentially tweaking that and edi editing that. And it makes, you know, your life easier um, as you start to, you know, write a, I, I still write blog posts every now and then. So when you do that, or if I'm looking for, cause now it's about to be, um, fall, for example. So I'll say, you know, what are the top 10 fall 2023 trends? So for me, I find that it's so, e it's easier than having to, um, with Google, right? You get the res results and the links, and then you have to sort of read the quick, um, you know, descriptor preview and then decide, do I want to click on this? But with, you know, chat GPT, you get whatever those. So if it's, you know, pop a color, I'm making it up. If it's like neon colors and, you know, whatever, <laughs> um, you know, um, tall boots, 
it's at least more easily digestible where it gives you something that you can work off of. And then I can say, oh, if this is it, then I'm going to plan to, you know, shoot a video where I may say three fall trends, my, oh, three fall trends that I will be wearing for, or that I'm wearing for, um, for in fall 2023. And then I'll shoot a video where it's like some of the things that I, um, got off the list. So I definitely feel like there's a place, um, for AI and now what I'm finding also is um, a lot of these online platforms, so like a Udemy or these different platforms where you can take free courses, they have AI prompt classes, which I'm going to be taking one of those because it will only help improve what you're getting out of it when you know sort of the best way to write those prompts. So, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you've taken us on an amazing journey. You've talked to us a lot about like your content creation, how you got started. For those of us that are in the entrepreneurial space or um, looking to become more serious in the content creation space, what are like three, your top three real quick tips that we could just kind of immediately take um, and run with? Um. So I feel like along the same lines of what I said before around um, comparison, right? Um, just making sure that you're running your own race and you're, you know, thinking about your journey. Um, perfection is the enemy of good. So don't try to have this high bar for yourself that you're, I, I must check all these boxes or if I'm creating, you know, this video, it needs to look, I need to have all these things. And I feel like that also leads to paralysis and then people end up not doing anything, right? Or they're scared to post a video or they're scared because they're like, oh, the picture didn't really come out or whatever it is that I'm trying to do if I'm promoting a product, um, you know, as an entrepreneur, if um, I'm selling myself as a service, like if I'm a speaker, you know, if the event circuit is my thing or I, you know, guest speak on podcasts. And maybe I feel like, oh, like that promo wasn't quite right. Whatever it is that we're all trying to promote, we should not wait for it to be super perfect. It's like, just do it because you never know. Like the sometimes it's so funny where it might be that one thing where you felt like it wasn't really good that people latch onto and say, oh, I really love this you know, piece of content or whatever. Meanwhile, you didn't even want to post it in the first place. <laughs> so, so that's another one. I'll just say um, uh, perfection can be the enemy of good. So don't wait for it to be perfect. Just do it, you know, um, and then move on to the next thing. <laughs> um, and then breaks are good. So taking breaks are a good thing. You don't have to be constantly on um, 24 seven. You don't have to post all the time. And if you post all the time, that's okay. But it's also okay to say, you know what? I'm you know, taking X number of days off of social media where I'm not going to post and everything will be okay. Or <laughs> I'm going to, like for me, what I decided was I don't post in feed on weekends. I'll post stories on my Instagram. I won't post in feed unless I absolutely have to for whatever reason, but I stay away from posting on weekends. So to me, that's what I do to say, I don't want to, again, I want to live life. I don't want to live life around, you know, social media. And um, I will say that there are times, right, that even warrant. So I lost my dad to cancer in 2019, and I had to take time off because I just mentally wasn't there. I couldn't. So I say that to people to say that was a really tough time for me. Um, so I just I had to take like a, an extended break. And it was fine because I needed that that time to deal with the loss. I'm still, you know, <laughs> dealing with the loss. Um, so but even from a everyone's situation may, may not be something as extreme as, you know, a loss. But your mental health is still very important. And I feel like in this day and age, everything is curated and we forget that. So again, we're comparing ourselves to people who are sharing, and we all do, even I do this right on my feed, it's curated. 
Um, so we can get caught up in feeling that pressure of, oh, I have to, I have, but no, it'll, it'll be there. Your audience will be there. Um, and so taking that break and not again, burning out is super important. And I feel like people sometimes don't say that enough where it's okay to take breaks. So yeah, that's another one. Sorry to hear about, um, your, your father passing. Thank you. Um, and I thank you for um your vulnerability in that and sharing just the um the way that you found to take care of yourself and the break that you needed and I feel like uh, a consistent theme that I've heard uh through the advice that you just gave and through some of the things that you've said throughout the interview is kind of this concept of exactly what you said um knowing yourself and choosing yourself in what it is that you truly desire what it is that you truly need uh mm -hmm. and i think that what you what you just said about needing a break and saying you know what i need a break i know i need a break mm -hmm. and i trust that the work that i've done is going to continue to speak for itself yeah um, i think that's amazing what what advice would you have for some of the entrepreneurs, content creators, those that are listening or watching? Um, what advice would you have for them when it comes to finding that balance between pushing forward yeah. and also choosing yourself and what you need and what you desire? That's a good question. Um, I'll say once you figure out what your goals are and what you want to do. Um, again, and when I say goals, like really mapping out what your goal is around, again, do I, am I full-time? Am I part-time? Um, what am I looking to do ultimately? Do I just, do I want brand deals? Do I want to work with brands? Do I want to um, create content for brands? So again, user-generated content is something else that's, you know, another area where, you don't, you may not even necessarily need to post the content because you're just giving the brands, right? Your um, content for them to use on their platforms. So once you really decide and, you know, what, um, what journey it is that you want to be on, then it's a matter of what is the commitment that I can dedicate to this. So even if you're full-time, you may decide that there are going to be days that are maybe those days where you're sending your, you know, pitch emails. Um, and they may be more days that are um, for, you know, handling, whether it's um, you mapping out your content, because some people plan content for the year, which can be overwhelming. But one of the tips that I have is if you get almost like one of these annual planners. I get these from TJ Maxx or Home Goods. Um, and then you can, I Google again, <laughs> I will Google like holidays. Cause you know, we have a lot of fake holidays. Everything's a holiday. Like there's national mug day. I'm sure it's a holiday, <laughs> um, <laughs> but I will, I will look like literally I look and then I spend. So usually I do that um, during the holidays, like between, you know, Christmas and new year, I'll literally sit and then I won't do it all in a day, but I'll map out and I I literally plug in like into these, you know, like the monthly calendar, what those holidays are. So that's to help me think about content creation, right? Um, so I say that to say, you have to decide what does consistency look like for you? So even whether again, full-time, part-time, doesn't matter. You still have to make that decision. Um, and then it's going to be, am I really able to knock out, you know, creating, so shooting multiple videos in one day, or do I want to, again, as I think about my week, so if I'm setting aside a day for planning my content, then do I set aside, say, Saturday and Sunday for shooting the content so that, you know, I'm thinking through what my plan is, or am I just going to knock out as many as I can? So for me, 
because of the other hats that I wear, like I said, as a mom, and we have like the girls are in sports and stuff. So what I do is I meet with a photographer once a month. And when I meet with him once a month, we are shooting about a minimum of five outfits in one day. <laughs> yes, I will change in the back of the car. Boom, boom, boom. Next outfit. Next, next, next. And we'll, you know, get the reels if we're doing reels. Get the, and that's so I I have one day a month where that's you know what I do. And then there there are videos that I'll shoot at home that don't involve you know the photographer. But once you figure out what makes sense, then it's about how can you be consistent because again. If there are some people where they, it can get overwhelming, if you're thinking about doing all of these things and the list is growing, you're like, oh my God, and then it becomes overwhelming. So for some folks, um, there's this book I read called Atomic Habits, and I love the idea, right? Because it's about little steps, little things. One, And I love another saying I love is one day at a time, one day at a time. What can I do today? And that's it. So if today it's it's going to be me thinking about, you know, what outfits do I want to shoot, right? Or me doing that Googling and, you know, uh, saving things to inspire, then I've done something and I can still check a box and say, I've done something versus trying to do it all at once. And it becomes overwhelming, you know? So I feel like, but we're, again, that formula may not work for one person, but for the type A's, like, because you were talking about type A person, they may want to say, I want to do it all today. Like, I can't, you know, it has to be done. So we have to know our personalities. And then over time, we evolve, right? So you may start out feeling overwhelmed, but then once you start to do, then you're like, okay, I'm getting a hang of this. Now I'm figuring out that I actually can shoot, you know, two videos in one day. Or I can shoot one video and just make it a three ways to style one, you know, one shirt or whatever. So it's, yeah, there's, you know, but it's, again, it starts with knowing yourself and what you're capable of and being okay. So atomic habits, one thing at a time, one thing a day, that's fine. Cause guess what? Doing something is better th than doing nothing. And that's why the whole, going back to the whole perfection thing, if you keep waiting for perfection, you're just, you're not doing anything. You're wasting time. But if you do it, you guess what? You've done it. You've accomplished something because you put it out there. It's done. So those would be some of the nuggets um, of advice that I would have. Oh man, that's so good. That's so, so good. Topes, you have taken us on this beautiful <laughs> journey. We got to understand your background. We got to understand uh, your background as a wife and a mother, um, as a current employee working that nine to five, as a content creator. Um, and as we as we bring the interview to a close, after learning so many amazing things from you and getting so many nuggets of wisdom from you um i have a final question yes here at gf plus we are all about breaking free from that corporate job and based on our conversation if that's the lane that you're in uh <laughs> all about breaking free from that corporate job what would you recommend to anyone that's looking to transition like you you mentioned what what your path was, but for somebody that is looking to transition um, from their nine to five job to growing their business or content creation full time, what what would you recommend to them? What would be your start with a plan? Start with a plan. So how how long do I think I'm going to need to get to a place where um, when I think about, again, pay and salary and all of that, how long do I need to be able to set myself up to a point where I feel like I've got enough banked that I can then take the leap? I think sometimes what happens is folks just want to take a leap, but you're, you're not thinking about the plan. 
So it has to be a plan. And that's the thing that I've learned from people who have done it is they have set a date in mind. So whether it's I need six months or I need a full year to literally start to save, you know, more deliberately and then starting to figure out what you need to have in place to take, you know, that leap. And then you do you do it. But I feel like not having the plan is the mistake. Have to have a plan. So that that way, um, you know how long you need to essentially get you where you need to be and then just, you know, jump and say, uh, bye. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good <laughs> advice. That is um, actually great advice. I love a good plan. Mm, Tokes, thank you so much. Thanks for having for me. Joining us on this interview series. It was definitely a pleasure to learn more about uh your experience thanks so much for having me amber and like i said i will send a list of those um platforms just in case um some folks in your audience are interested um so yeah awesome, awesome. we look forward to receiving it and to all of our audience members and everyone able to tune in thank you so much for tuning in we will see you all next time on the gf plus interview series